Hi, my name is Wilson Pun. I've been a real estate attorney in New York, practicing for over the past 10 years. So today we're going to be talking about how you find your new dream home. For everyone, it's going to be case specific. So it depends on what factors are driving you to look for the new home in the first place. You could be starting a new job that requires you to move to a certain place. You can be having an expanding family that requires you to move from either an apartment or your starter home to something that's larger that can fit your family members more comfortably. Those are typically the primary concerns. If you have an expanding family, a uh, very high consideration typically in New York is going to be the school district, sort of what schools their kids are going to, their level of education, how to set them up for the future. So that's why, you know, the old real estate adage and location for your house really is going to be a top priority is where you first start your search. You need to find the location that you want your future home to be located at. So whether it's going to be close enough to your work area to, for it to be for a commute to be acceptable or whether it has a good school district that you want to be sending your kids to, those are typically the primary concerns. So you would start from the location and then you would start filtering out the different offerings that are on the market based on uh, sort of what homes you would like, whether you would want a standalone single family or whether you want to see if there's condo units available in the area. Each one is slightly different, but you know, uh, I'd always be glad to walk any potential clients through the differences and what would work for them. So typical criteria can be price range, of course, which is impacted by number of bedrooms, bathrooms, you'll have whether it's like a gated community, what the tax in New York, when you look out to, for example, homes in Long Island, where the public school system is a bit better, you will see that taxes out there are going to be on a much higher level than in New York City. That's because, you know, a lot of that goes to the schools. So the pricing, the home pricing there is also going to be commensurately increased uh, based on the tax valuations as well. Um, so when I work with clients, I typically work with a lot of their real estate agents as well. They're very instrumental in the process. So with the real estate agent, a lot of it is very relational. So what I would first recommend is, you know, talk to your friends, families that have closed on, you know, homes or other uh, real estate properties and sort of get an idea of how their experience was with the real estate agent they used for those transactions. And if there are all positives all around. It definitely doesn't hurt to make an introduction. If not, or you want to look for additional options, there's always many uh, online databases that you can look as well that would recommend or direct you to real estate brokerages, each with their own agents in your area. For example, uh, Long Island City may have their own brokerages and agents that specifically or very well versed in the properties located there. Uh, similarly for you know Manhattan, uh, Brooklyn, Long Island, they all have a very, they may have very specific brokerages or agents that are very familiar with that area. So that can be very helpful. So when you're working with a specific broker and their agents and you want and you value their local knowledge highly. So let's say for example, you want to buy a condo unit. That's sort of what you have in mind. That's the lifestyle that you want. You like those uh, shared common areas. You like the amenities that a lot of these buildings did offer. You would ask them what experience have they had with condos in, let's say, for example, the Long Island City area. How many units have they sold or helped buy or sell in the past in any of those condo buildings? Um, what's their familiarity like with them? You can sort of pick their brain with the knowledge and sort of see, ask them which condo buildings they would recommend for you and your needs. For example, if you have young kids, they may recommend buildings and properties that have playrooms suitable for young kids. If you're athletic, they may be able to recommend this property or this property has a very great gym facility so that that may be something that you're looking for. So they're able to give you a selection and recommendation tailored based on your needs specifically without you having to do a search on every single condo building in Long Island City, which while possible, may be something that's a bit more time consuming on your end. So a good place to start looking for your potential sources for agents. Um, of course, you know, as I mentioned earlier, is always going to be friends and family. You want to sort of see what experience they had with their agent so you can know whether or not that specific agent that closed on their transaction is going to be right for you. And then number two, we talked about this actually in my earlier episode where we talked about how to select members of your team to make sure that you can get to closing. So just a quick recap, that's going to be your real estate agent, that's going to be a loan officer that's going to help you get your loan through. And of course, that's going to be a real estate attorney. So I, for example, would be a real estate attorney that can help you once you find your home, guide you through the process, 
talk you through the legal ramifications of your contract and make sure you get to closing without undergoing and having to take on unnecessary risks.